Well, come on in, Harlan. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. You know the drill? No. And the hammer? Jesus. Ace is the police. At the moment, I'm not doing coffee, so I made a big vat of black tea. Shout out to PG Tips. So I'm going to pour myself a little bit with some ice. It's still hot. So do you want hot tea or iced tea? Uh, no, got... I have a cactus cooler by you the Canadian right here. Dry Company. Well, if I could do this... my own commercial. Yeah, no, I'm saying this is just going to pick you up better. Hi, I have my own drink, Cactus Cooler by the Canada Dry Corporation. If you find yourself in a desert and your lips are parched, Cactus Cooler. Do you want to try no, it into the microphone? Part. Yeah, do it again into the microphone. Do it into the microphone. Why not? Uh, no, 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 no. Hold no. Do, do, blabbity blue. Hey gang, if you're ever lost in the desert and your lips are parched, don't forget Cactus Cooler for your dry, swollen, pink lips. Make them moist. Make them wet. Get thirsty. Get quenched. Get diarrhea. And s wait, hold on. How does it go? I, well, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. I think I might have added one extra thing. Can I try it again? Yeah. Commercials are hard. What's hard? Commercials? Yeah. Hey, gang. If you have tired, parched lips, spread them open and stick a nice hot... Hold on. It's a cactus. Hey, gang. If you're thirsty and you're out in the desert under the scorching heat of the sun, don't forget Cactus Cooler. Spread your pink lips wide and moist. Well, you walked right through it. It's all right. I don't think I want to do it. I'm not a commercial guy. It's a lot of pressure. Have you ever done a commercial? You look like you have. Like a TV commercial? I'm here to announce the launch of McDonald's new signature sriracha sandwich, and they decided to turn it up. Thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. Moshe. Moshe? Yeah, that's me. Moshe. Do you remember back in the day when people would have to make websites, but it would be really complicated because you didn't know how to code? Ugh, the 1700s were the worst. Start with a free trial at squarespace.com. It's where dreams become websites. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash T-Y-S-O to gonna save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll also say I'm a Squarespace user. Well, that's really Not, beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. We... The, We'll talk more about We're it done. later. This episode is sponsored by Magic Mind. Moshe, tell me the truth. Have you heard of them? I have. Have you used one? I think I drank one at Pete Holmes' house once. Oh, yeah. he. I see he talks about these. I um, don't know how to explain this because it doesn't get me hyped up, but it does make me feel more alert. They compare it to coffee, but it doesn't feel like a coffee to me. Should I drink one right now? Drink one now. Okay, and Let me let you guys know. Get 20% off at magicmind.com slash Tyso and use promo code Tyso20. That's 20% off by going to magicmind.com slash Tyso and use promo code Tyso20. Rick, you're in unbelievable shape. How do you keep your body firm, tight, and to completely delicious? <laughs> okay. I'll try it again. No, no, no. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> you saying that. Thank you. <laughs> You know, you too could join the growing rowing community at Hydro. The growing what community? Head over to Hydro.com and use code TYSO to save up to $500 off your Hydro. That's H-Y-D-R-O-W.com, code T-Y-S-O to save up to $500. Hydro.com and use code TYSO. Also, I want to show you what this, I have it. I've been having it since before they, I'll show you. We could talk about it later. Hey, California, doing a live Take Your Shoes Off with Adam Ray, February 18th at the Dynasty Typewriter, 7.30 p.m. You want to come? If tickets are even left, link in description. Pretty good. <sighs> That's my cactus cooler. And boy, are my lips pink and wet. Say Wait. that again, but say your arms are tired. Well, no, come on, guy. I don't do other people's material. This is for... This is, I appreciate you that. know, they're not going to want other people's material all over their product. Nice try. Well, that's not what Monica Lewinsky said. Who? Monica Lewinsky had Bill Clinton's um, um, material all over her products. Wow. Sarah. Remember that in the mid-90s? Yeah, I also remember Pepperidge Farm had a uh, commercial, and their slogan was, Pepperidge Farm remembers. I think you're talking about Game of Thrones when they say the North remembers. 
Well, you got to wonder because you think about cakes, bunt cakes, spice cakes, log cakes. A lot of time they're for the elderly, right? <laughs> and I when never... you're right? And then when your slogan is Pepperidge Farm <laughs> remembers and you're talking to the populace that is the most likely to get dementia and not remember a thing. I think there's grounds for a class action lawsuit here. But what about the old people who say, Welcome home, Lady Stark. The North remembers. Yeah, but did they have cakes in the North? Gotta remember. Welcome home, Lady Stark. The North remembers. Can I do just a John Vincent or whatever his name is? Because Oh, well, we haven't, I haven't talked to John Michael, show a little respect. Well, what I'm getting at is I've been here about 10 minutes. All I'm hearing is this John Michael Vincent guy. John Michael. John Michael. John Michael. John Michael. John Michael, this is all out still. John Michael's a pro. I love John Michael. John Michael Vincent, the actor. John Michael, I apologize. Right. And uh, a little invasive. Stepping on our time. So, uh, John Michael Vincent, well, um, how about golf? Do you hear that one? Are you, if you're in charge, you have to for him to listen to you. The guest has to be wearing this. Oh, guy, karate stars me. <laughs> Speaking of karate stars, I yeah. would love to get Ralph Macchio on the podcast. Are you serial? Yeah. Why? He's a karate star. Well, I don't. It's not. It's not like this is a karate themed podcast. It, well, one of my first guests was John Hurwitz, the, the thumbnail, a, one of the creators of Cobra Kai, who I actually think I'm going to have on again pretty soon. Great guy. Great Kai. Great Kai, yeah. Great Koba Kai. Koba Kai. Uh, these, definitely. Up to you. Now, I'm going to... Um... Check, 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 check. Right, if you could write me a yep. check for being here. Write me a check, check. Give me a check. If you could write me a check for being on your podcast, I'd like a check, check. I'd like to get paid for being on this lousy check, check. Write me a check. Did you, Could you write me a check for being here? How much would you want? I don't know. My time's money. Buddy, you know, this is your third appearance on here, and it's also, uh, I've done your podcast three times. I know. What's three plus three? Seven, if you include the Patreon that you did. I um, love me some blueberry pie. Oh. Yeah, blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. I like blueberries because they're, I like a fruit that, you know, many fruits and just hang on a tree. But blueberries struggle to survive in grizzly country. And I want to... <laughs> Arlen's the type of guy that prefers his fruit to, that struggles alive in grizzly country. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're, they're, they're fending off grizz, the grizz, grizzly bears. The grizz sounds like a move, a sexual move. What well, kind well of, there's that too. What you, what is, That's also one of my favorite treats. What's the sexual uh, move, the grizz? How does that work again? So what you do is you get Lee press on nails. You get them. You get the leaf press on nails. You glue them on if you're a guy or a girl. Right, either one. And uh, like a grizzly bear, you follow your nose to the salmon. And you start swiping. You swipe wait, left. You swipe wait, right. Wait, wait, wait. You, you put sh nails, sharp nails on? and Like you, grizzly nails. You just scoop at a girl's vagina? Well, I said the salmon. That's, come on. Okay. Well, you don't scoop at it. You waft at it. You're like, you're, you're kind of. Oh, the grizz is basically just putting on nails and like smelling, you're wafting. wafting her. Yeah. The grizz. The grizz. Yeah. Patreon. That was, uh, that was, that tested my limits, that one. That was the only one out of the seven that we've done together where I was stoned. And I, I wanted to get stoned for this because I had such a good time. Oh, wow. But I'm doing this uh, gut reset. I'm on, uh, 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 oh. I'm on day four now. I had, and I can oh. never pronounce her last name right, so I'm going to say it, and then we'll voice it over when I say it right. Mary Shenuda. And uh, she, that's why I'm not doing coffee right now, too. Okay, yeah, Mary Shenuna. That's how you say it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Eskimo girl? Well, uh, you're not supposed to say that. What, Mary? Gulp, gulp, gulp. Um, Shenuna. No, you're not supposed to say Eskimo. Correct. Why can't we say Eskimo? Cultural appropriation. Okay, so if I get an Eskimo pie at the store... That's fine, as long as an Eskimo made it. You know, technically, Eskimo pies are only Eskimo pies if they are made in uh, the Atlantic uh, North. Okay, so if the Mexican like guy over at the Italian restaurant makes me a lasagna, I can't eat it? 
I don't know. I think lasagna, technically, it's just called a big noodle. I think technically it's called a big stewing pot full of bullshit. Okay? Eskimo pie. I'm just telling you what the people say. Pie guy, Eskimo pie. If lasagna is not made in the city of lasagna in Italy, then technically, technically, it's shorthand. I get it. Like, if I come up to you and I go like this with my eyelashes on your cheek, people call that a... A butterfly kiss? I thought that was a... Oh, if I go up to your nose and I go like this. Okay. What do you call that? Gay? You, that's an Eskimo you, kiss. Oh, that's called an Eskimo kiss. When you go like this with your nose. I think it's because... Oh, when you rub your nose on another person's nose. nose. I an think Eskimo it's be, kiss. Because Eskimos always have their mittens on. Okay. So they can't kiss with their hands. So what's an Eskimo French kiss look, look like? <laughs> when, they, when they blow their nose. They blow their nose into nose. your nose. Yeah. Wow. And then you got to hope it doesn't freeze. Because, you know, snot is full of liquid. And if you were to back and forth, you could actually join, get locked together. You ever see dogs have intercourse? And when they finish, no, the male dog locks. The, the, the wolf or the dog or the coyote, whatever canine. The male locks or the female locks? The male locks. So how the, does he have like, like, a, like um, I'm picturing a wall anchor that goes like this so it can't come out? Well, he comes in. Right, but he can't come out. But he can come in. But he can't come out. Well, if he pulls out, you can. But then how is he locked? Well, because he's got a combination cock. Wait. No. But what I'm saying, it you always you're always distracting me, guy. What I was trying to focus on is if two Eskimos French kiss... Their snot comes out. Only one Eskimo could French kiss another. That's what, the difference. Right. right. It's kind of like if I were to put my, my butt up against your butthole. Right. And I poop into your butthole, that is a tangerine kiss. But oh. we can't both. We can't both. Wow. <laughs> we can't both wow. poop into each other's a buttholes. tangerine kiss. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's the taste. But here's the deal. If you join... Like one nostril at a time. Right. The fluid boogers. And right. you're in minus 102 centigrade. That's going to freeze almost instantaneously. Mm. And you're going to be, even though you wanted to have but some not if passion. not up into their nose. You see, you're picturing right, it'll me join. it. You connect your nostrils right, together. Right, but when it touches, <laughs> instant free. Remember in Avatar when the, the mentoids put their hair onto the horse's mane <laughs> and it just intertwined and they were locked? Mm -hmm. They became one? Mm -hmm. This is what happens when uh, Eskimos French kiss. It's an, if in that cold climate, <laughs> oh, frozen, and then they got to spend the day together till they get in the igloo and defrost. Yeah, it is interesting. Just, uh, just stuff. You don't, you know, it's not part of the podcast, but it's stuff. Hey, John, I'm podcasting with Harlan Williams. Oh, I love his work and, and all of his stand-ups. That's so cool. All right. Uh, I'll call you back. All right, man. I might not answer. I'm going courtside to the Bucks. Wow. Have a great game. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, the Bucks versus Pacers tonight in the past when this aired. All right. Love you, bud. Bye. Bye. Huh. Sorry, I think that was the wrong number. Oh, wow. Well, let's get into it. Okay. We Harlan. We get going. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming over. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I know you make your own shirts. I make these. So actually, by the way, we got this uh, relatively new merch. Oh, the, uh, wow. Goblin's on, on the most com comfy hoodie I've... You should do I a have. plug for it. Uh, could you do it for me? Uh, I'm actually, I'm in a contractual obligation. I'm instead an of official sponsor instead of, of sweatshirt, Cactus Cooler guy. Instead of sweatshirt, say Cactus Cooler, but but to, but but <laughs> okay. use all the attributes that this would be. It's comfortable. You could wear it. Okay. You, you get it at rickglassman.com. Hey, gang, if you're thirsty and your lips are pink and moist, please cool off with a nice uh, Cactus Cooler <laughs> hoodie. They're fun. They keep you uh, moisturized, and they're black. Is that like when you're crying? What do you mean? When you moist your eyes? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, I said moisture eyes. Right. Like if you're, if it's like if you're like sometimes when I get sincere with people, sometimes my eyes start to water. Is that what you're talking about? Let me just explain something to you about letters. Like there's a letter like at the end of the alphabet. 
Okay. Letter number 26. It's Z. Uh huh. So when you say moisturize, you throw a Z in there. Like E Y E Z. What you're referring to is moisten your eyes. Right. But when you throw one letter in there, the Z, it becomes a word called moisturize. But Zs could be anything. Like if you were to say, oh, what's up with the boys, you could spell that B O Y Z. Okay. A lot of times you would even do a capital Z or a backwards Z, or you would do the Z in crayon and have it turned down like the R in Toys R Us. Right. Which, by the way, is an R, not an A R E. Oh. Which is a show in Las Vegas. Oh. Aria. No, oh. By Cirque du Soleil. Oh, Aria is a hotel. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. Wait, are we talking about cakes again? Yeah, I, uh, we, we put up a clip of Aria from Game of Thrones holding a cake, a callback from the Aria Hotel for oh. the audio only people. Oh, audio only people. <laughs> What's, uh, what is Game of Thrones? I, I didn't watch it. Did you read it? No, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I don't like. Do you want to watch it, and then we'll go, like we could pause this. How many episodes are there? There's eight seasons. Um, I'm rewatching okay. for the third and a half time now. Um, I just started season eight. So you're saying we can watch it now and then hop back into this? We could watch it and then we could do that. Yeah, like we could okay. stop this. Let's do it. I'm. I'd love to. I want to be informed. If I'm gonna have a conversation about something. Let's watch the eight eight seasons, and then we'll just pop back in and finish up the podcast. 71 hours later. All right, let's... Everything is exactly pretty much almost as it was. Wow. Um, I had a, them post makes you another cactus cooler. Do you want it? Oh, yeah, I finished my other one off. I think it was episode uh, 28 with the, uh, the Night Walkers. And thank you. Oh, wow. At 28, what a cliff biter, huh? Yeah. You know, how about the end of uh, season seven when, uh, spoiler you. alert, Game of Thrones spoiler yeah. alert, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it a cliff biter, but I would yeah. call it a mountain burner. Yeah. When the yeah. dragon, when the... Uh, when, when the dragon swooped down and got Dimbledorf and then he was uh, just his little legs were swirling around his elf shoes. <laughs> and, you know, it's so funny because he... You walk around, you go for a walk in the park, and you think, what are the odds I ever get hit by an elf shoe? You know those curly elf shoes? Yeah. And then you watch Game of Thrones, and you saw Dimbledorf get taken away, and you just see his, his, his green leotards and those curly Can't elf shoes. Pardon you? You're supposed to say green leotards. Oh, his green Eskimo leggings, and he just, they're just swinging in the air, and one of his elf shoes flies off. And I know it's... You know, a, a Roman Empire fantasy what, thing. What are, you, what are you doing? I love shrimp. I was hoping uh -oh. if you had some shrimp, I could maybe you could walk are, some Are up. you making fun of the short the, people? The Lannister, the littlest Lannister? Oh, who's he? The O on episode, yes. He's in a lot of them. Yeah, little Lannister. He was also an elf, remember? Yep. Which is interesting. I mentioned the elf slippers. Yeah. Well, they did that on purpose. Oh, okay. And actually, uh, there thankfully it's shut down. But for a while, it was at Sea World when they had the collab, and they actually did it on porpoise. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. Oh God, dude, it really pisses me off what they do to those whales. And I love animals, but I also I understand the hypocrisy because I eat some of them too. Mm -hmm. But like, I, you see, when you go to zoos and you just see these elephants locked up and they're by themselves, it's just like let them be, dude. Like if it's a mm -hmm. sanctuary and they're and they're and or rehabilitating them, but when you just capture them. Yeah. Well, what's even more startling to me is you have people, you know, you have this species of animal, and in its title is the word killer. Okay, you got killer whales. Name a few more. There aren't any. That's what I'm trying oh, to tell you. you're just saying killer whale. There's no uh, murdering hyena. Well, there's, there's, there's the hornets. There's the murder hornets. Killer bees. There's killer bees, killer murder bees. hornets. There's a murder of crows. But what I'm talking about, people don't wrangle and work with killer bees, but you had people jumping in the water with killer whales. Now, if you're signing up for a job, do you want to be employed at a job where the thing you're interacting with has the word killer in it? Right. And then they put you in a black wetsuit, mm -hmm. tell you to jump in the water. Now you look like shiny licorice, like a candy treat. Mm. 
You're jumping in the water with something that has a mouth bigger than Oprah Winfrey's left ass cheek. And here we go. You're jumping in the water. This thing's got more teeth than Donny Osmond at a gopher hole festival. And you're shiny like chocolate candy. You're jumping in the word killer. I mean, when you go to jail, mm-hmm. you don't go, hey, uh, is there anyone in with Dahmer? Could, could right. I get into the Dahmer suite? Anyone? Is there any room left in Bundy's cell? Mm-hmm. Could I'd like to bunk the in guy with that the always, buns. The guy that always has his hand on his pants and he works at a shoe store. No, you're thinking of married with children. Bundy. Yeah, I'm t- no, that's, uh, that's uh, 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 what's his face? Uh, Ed O'Neill. Al Bundy. Yeah. I'm talking about oh, his Ted Bundy, Ted. the guy that, you know that murdered women and smashed their heads against uh, Volkswagen Beetle dashboards. Isn't and- it crazy how one brother does that stuff and the other brother sells shoes? Well, one brother does a sitcom that brings laughs and giggles yeah. and, and life to people, fills right. their hearts with joy, and then the other brother like takes life away and kills and dismembers and it's almost like that old highlights magazine with goofus and gallant remember of course how could i forget just the two brothers nutty little goofus and gallant highlights magazine remember the timber toast tommy timber toast but goofus and, uh, and Powder Gall- toast man well that's only was there a power was he in highlights magazine he was in ren and stimpy Okay, well, I was—I think I referenced Highlights Magazine with Goofus and Gallant. Did you ever not see Goofus and Gallant? Goofus and Gallant. Goofus and Gallant. Goofus, Goofus and Gallant. Goofus was kind of the inappropriate, politically incorrect man. guy, and Gallant was very. Powder toast man. What the H? What the H back? Look out! Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! I throw crows in your nutsack. Those tangerine kisses are no joke. <laughs> Whew. Wow. It's the only way to get rid of a killer crow. Wow, dude. Which we now know because of Game of Thrones. Spoiler alert. By at the, the yeah. end of season eight. What was your fave episode of Game of Thrones? I think my favorite season was maybe season four. Why? Uh, it, it, I think it was, I mean, the writing... Yeah. Like the stakes were one of my favorite episodes is season six, Battle of the Bastards, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I, I think also, yeah, I don't know. Season four, four and the pie, season one, too. Season, season one, one and season four. Season one, I think I liked the most with the Wind Walkers and those because they reminded me they looked like if a Dairy Queen Blizzard could manifest itself. Right. It, they looked like walking embodiments of the. The Dairy Queen Blizzard, a beautiful Dairy Queen treat that you can get at the Dairy Queen drive through And uh, just their pasty white skin, their anemic I'm sorry, I was I didn't swollen I, in faces. Say it again. Their, well, I didn't hear you. Oh, I was gonna say the uh, wind walkers. Mm-hmm. They reminded me if you could if you could manifest a silent fart, if you could humanize a silent fart, uh, take the gaseous vapor. And form it into a human shape. I think the wind walkers would be exactly what you'd get. And then when he, they were in the forest and Mumblebloorf came out and Gimbal Dumps and they had that fight. They were waving their magic uh, spoiler sticks. Spoiler alert, Mumblebloorf, uh, who kept say, saying that was actually what he was saying was, again, spoiler alert, Game of Thrones, he was saying, hold the door. He wasn't really mumbling it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Remember? Okay, I think I might have. You might be thinking of that. I'm, I was thinking of Glumblebimps, the 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 the, the, the troll wizard, with the uh, magic shillelagh thing. And what were you, you were talking about Tyrion Lannister. You were talking about because yeah. he's he's little, right? What were you saying about him and his shoes? Because those shoes at the uh, in um, Wizard of Oz also right. those shoes curled up. The curl curly yeah. shoes. Well, what I was saying about them is they're 
they're really fun to have around the house because I don't know if you've ever had a jar of jam or pickles yeah. and you just can't get it open. Oh, no. You go to the closet, you get your curly elf shoe and wrap it around and just, and uh, that pops the lid right off and all the relish you can eat after that. And you can also even scoop with those stupid mutant uh, curly elf shoes. I mean, I don't know why footwear would ever curl like as if some demented kid had feet that actually swirled around right. and his, you know, his toes ended. What kind of mutant dildo shaped child have has you seen, curly fuck feet? Have you seen when people grow their fingernails and toenails out very long? Right. Sometimes they could curl up like that. Right. But there's a big, they don't make footwear or gloves. But when you've got a kid with curly fuck feet, uh, you know, why? Pay who retail. Wa who wants a kid with curly fuck feet? I, at that point, I'd probably just put him in a shopping cart and roll him down a hill, see where he went, you know? <laughs> let's you're making let me, him go. You're making me think of um, sure, the, the sure. Disney movie. Oh, curly fuck feet? No, when they oh. push him down the hill. Um, yeah. The Jamaican bobsled movie, Cool Runnings. Oh, curly, yeah. Curly fuck feet is what you could call it. If you had a kid, have you ever seen a kid with curly feet? God, they smell. They really smell, these kids. They stink. Hmm. Because they can't really wash when your foot curls around. Can't wash what? It's really tough to wash like a curly foot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Pretty soon, AI is going to help executives like her see trends to stay ahead of her competitions. We're going to be friends. I'm sorry about this. This episode is sponsored by Magic Mind. I just had a Magic Mind, Rick. Yeah. I feel focused, energetic, I don't have any stress, and I've got a lot of immunity. Yeah. I don't know if you could really feel the immunity one necessarily right away, but I, uh, I believe it. But I will say it really makes me feel calm. I only drank it five seconds ago, so I don't know what it will do for me. But it was delicious. Straight yeah. up. It felt like a uh, a high-end juice shot that you would get at a really fancy place. And it's got all these cool things in it, too. Discover clean energy without the crash or jitters. Say goodbye to excessive caffeine. Which, incidentally, I have been caffeine... Not caffeine, excuse me. I've been coffee-free for uh, since Christmas. Well, I have been magic mind full since five seconds ago. And I'll let you know how it goes. I suggest that you become an advertiser on my podcast. Because this was so good, we want to do magic mind, Ooh. too. You know that Forbes calls it Silicon Valley's new morning elixir. You knew that. I, of course I did. I wrote the copy. Get 20% off at magicmind.com and use promo code TISO20. That's 20% off by going to M-A-G-I-C-M-I-N-D.com slash TISO and use code TISO20 for 20% off. Peace. Okay, I just got back. Rick showed me his hydro and I am in the best shape of my life. Do it again, but say, and boy, are my arms tired. Okay. Okay, I just got back. Rick just showed me his hydro, and boy, are my arms tired. Not just your arms, but your back and your lower body. What's great about rowing and why I got into it, I have a lot of just joint issues, is it's low impact, but you can still up the resistance a lot. Shout out to Eric Griffin, by the way. I know he uses one. Does low impact mean high risk of injury? <laughs> it's funny that you say that. It's actually lower risk for injury. That sounds much better than high risk for injury. Yeah, but those classes, I bet all the workouts are filmed in some ridiculous Silicon Valley boardroom or Buddy, something. Buddy, they're literally filmed all over the world. Literally? Uh, literally. You could travel the world from the comfort of your living room while doing a full body workout. How do I get a hydro? You mean, how do you join the rowing community a hydro? No, I mean, how do I get them to send me a physical actual sample because of this ad I'm doing? You have to buy it. If you are looking for a home workout system and you want something that's low impact, head over to hydro.com and use code TISO to save up to $500 off your hydro. That's H-Y-D-R-O-W.com, code TISO to save up to $500. Hydro.com, code TISO. It's just a great exercise. Rowing is good for you and it's got an Ivy League feeling to it. So you can like look at other people and be like, I know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rick, that's your name, right? Mm -hmm. You were talking earlier about a really intriguing website, uh, Squarespace. Oh, yeah. Go to rickglassman.com. That's run by Squarespace. But anyway, go ahead. Can you tell me more about this online store thing? You mean selling your products on an online store? Yeah. Well, I know about online stores where you have to pick between digital or physical products. It's my least favorite thing about them. So the thing between choosing between physical and digital is you're forgetting about service products. And with Squarespace, you uh, don't have to pick one. All three. 
You can do all three. How much does a trial cost? It must be astronomically expensive. No, tr it's truly free. You could take a look and play with... Oh, you're going to talk about the flexible website templates, right? There are so many to pick from, and you could also choose different things for different pages. Let's say you want to have your online store. Let's say if you want to have your homepage, your about page. There are so many different versions of this, and there's nothing you need to code. You could look at it. You can move pictures around. It's very simple. Yeah, but I'm sure these websites you have to like access, organize, and upload all your content in all these different places, right? I'm looking at right here. Asset library. Upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. With a new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. This product is great! So you're telling me all I have to do is head to squarespace.com for a free trial? Yep. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Tyso. To save 10% off your first purchase, right? Yep. Of a website or a domain. Oh, man. Go, 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 go. Mm. Boy, oh boy, I love this stuff. Yeah, we're going to have to cover those up with gulps. What? The slurps? Yeah, we took care of it. Oh. Okay. That was a big slurp. Yeah. It's a big drink. Speaking of big slurps, remember yeah. the movie where he goes, big gulps, huh? Who? Jim Carrey in the movie Dumb and Dumber. He did? Yeah, he he, uh, he walks out of a 7-Eleven and legend lore, lore has it that uh, he improvised Big gulps. And he goes, big gulps, huh? Well, see you later. People love that line. Really? I don't even remember it. There's also lore that when he is walking out of the hotel bar and he sees Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, he goes, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon? And he got really excited about it. Right. Lore says that that was improvised. Right. And then he ran into the bar and he goes, we, we, we made it to the moon or something. Now, tell me if this is true. Because yeah. um, um, lore has it. Yeah. That uh, John Hughes, while um, they were filming Uncle Buck. Yes, and John Candy. Yes. Can, 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 can. Candy, he's so dandy. Yeah, I called him <laughs> my daddy. I just knew that I wanted to do comedy like my man. Like he's my so man. good. He's the man. He goes, Toronto, where I stand. I live there. I was born there. I was raised there. He was my idol. You a chicken head, cut. Sight, big pancake, Uncle Buck, here's 25 cents, take this rat to pull that mole off your face. Track, track. Trains, automobiles, trains and planes, planes and automobiles, trains and planes, planes, automobiles, trains and planes. That's candy, not what I see. Candy, candy. I see pride. I see power. I see a badass mother who don't take no crap from. That's cool running John Candy. Cool buddy Candy. Hold it up. Sandy, he turns around with a... J J J Jamaica. Second city, comedy, improv, wannabe, gotta be, like can, 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 can candy. Mm, I don't know any of his other movies, so I can't flow. I really only know the trains, planes, ones, and something about Home Alone. He's in that. Ooh, he is in the back of the van. <laughs> okay. I play poker. I like with it. My you got. Friend. You could be our babysitter. <sighs> What? The scene when Macaulay Culkin was looking through the dog door. Right. Uh, uh, that's or the mail, the mail thing. That's yeah. when uh, John Hughes came up with the idea sure. for Home Alone. Seeing Macaulay Culkin doing that, that gave him the idea of which, by the way, did you know he wrote that in like a weekend? Also, wow. fun fact about Home Alone is they were done with it. It was a low budget movie just as a long shot. They threw it to, to, to uh, John Williams. Um, just to see if he would score it. Right. John Williams scored it, makes the movie. So many of those songs, a lot of people think are actual Christmas songs, but they're from Home Alone, similar to Here's to You, Mrs. Robinson, mm -hmm. is actually from uh, Game of Thrones. But anyway, what I'm saying is the moment that John Hughes saw Macaulay Culkin looking through the thing gave him the idea for Home Alone. Is that similar to how you think that when... Uh, the powers that be saw Jim Carrey talking about, whoa, they landed on the moon. That's where they got the idea for you because you were in that movie going like this and saying guy and stuff. Right. That's where they came up with the idea for Rocket Man. Whoa. Let me think about this for a minute.
Let's just come off. Left, left three, bro. Right four. Right. Dumb fuck. Stupid numb fuck. Nimrod fuck cluster numb fuck. If you want to see Helen Keller do a Rubik's cube, you're looking at it, folks. Here he is. He's twisting it. He's coming in. It's the final moment. He's right at the edge. No. Then how did you get the job? Oh, is this a coincidence? Well, I don't know that that's really any of your business. I know we're here to answer questions and chit chat, but that one sort of, I keep it off the okay. table. I don't think I want them to know. What about them? Because I could turn that camera off. I don't want them to know. I certainly don't want them to know. I don't want you to know. And uh, some things you just keep <gasps> under your hat. You don't Some you things? don't give away everything on an interview, guy. Uh huh. You know, if uh, Jack Nicholson went on and told you, "Hey, I was in The Shining." You know, do you, you want to see that interview? Uh, if uh, Bridget Bardot came on and said, "Hey, I like chicken wings." I mean, who wants to watch that? If I, you know, uh, Carrie Fisher comes on, "Hey, Star Wars." Hey, 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 Star Wars. Hey, you know, who wants Wouldn't that? Wouldn't you say that's for horses, though? Well, hey. I don't know. Cows will eat it too. Moo, they won't. Moo, they w Whoa, what did you double dutch hey, fuck me? No cap. Or should I say, yes cap? Whoa. Hey. <sighs> oh, unbelievable blow. Dude. You were good with that Rubik's Cube. Those are tough. Thank you. You know, I'm so bad at the Rubik's Cube. Hi, how bad are, are you? you? I do well. Let me show you. Man. I got to. Uh, where is it? Oh, can I get it? Yeah. I'm so bad at the Rubik's cube that someone gave it to me done, and I couldn't even solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a joke that you've been doing for a while? It is. It's, uh, it's funny. Well, it's, what, it's one of those ones you call a keeper. Right. You know, when you stumble on gold, uh, you know, you know, what are you going to go out into the, you know, the hills of the Yukon or a river bank in Anchorage, right? Uh, harvest some gold and just throw it back in the river? No, you're going to put it in your satchel. You're going to cash it in. You're going to let it play. Mm -hmm. now, now, for for farmers and such far yeah. who do jokes, farmer jokes. Yeah. Um, uh, do they go from harvest to har har harvesting? Uh, it depends what region you're in because right. some farmers, they can uh, harvest all season. They can, if right. they're in a warmer clime, they can harvest through the fall, winter, summer. But if you're in a northern clime, mm -hmm. you're limited Just to spring. the fall, spring, and summer. Right. <laughs> well, if you're going to laugh, maybe uh, farm topics aren't for me. Yeah. Oh, kooky eyes. Watch. Whoa. Mongo eyes. Have you ever heard of a chameleon? Mm -mm. It's a type of lizard. Madagascar, Africa, Amazon, warm southern regions, jungles. They're one of the only animals in the world where their eyes can move separately. So they could move one eye this way. Like this. Yes, that's why I, I was saying it. How do you do that? 
and then they have a tongue, and I don't know how long your tongue is, but a chameleon's tongue is about seven times the length of its body, and it slaps it out. A chameleon and kiss. A fly. Stick your tongue out. Mm. Chameleon wow. kiss. You know what? Chameleons, what they use, it's like their hunting tool. They mm -hmm. use it to catch flies. flies. Now, I keep a hornet's nest under my nut bag, and if I were to pull a hornet out and throw it up in the air, would you catch it with your tongue? Yeah, I'm grossed out, but yeah. Here we go. Wow, dude. Stinger, baby. Wow. Open your mouth. Mm, honey barbecue. Oh, or interesting. Honey nut. Yeah, honey, honey nut more, like makes honey more nut. sense. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to go wash your hands for me? No, thanks. I'm busy. I'm doing a podcast. Okay. Well... I don't want you to touch the microphone now that you just put your hands down your pants. Why would I touch the microphone? Oh, come on, guy. What do you mean? You just did it. Oh, that's an involuntary podcast reaction. IPR? You ever hit your knee and it goes out? When I'm on a podcast, I instinctually just, you know, I'm always dibble dabbling. From Game of Thrones? Oh, he was great. Remember when he got killed by the wind fucker? <laughs> well... You know, I've been in some serious windstorms before. Yeah, you look like you have. Um, I mean, your hair is completely fucked. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Was it really that windy? Wind acting, friend. Wow, you should be in the Sharknado movies. Wind acting! All right, you can stop it and post it online. You said windy acting. Windy acting, wind acting. As long as we're all friends. Let Let's call the whole thing off. Let me throw something at you. Go ahead. You're a wind actor, you're saying, right? Here we go. Ready? So I just want to see how you react. Fuck, dude. Have you ever won a Golden Globus or a I have not, but you know, I've been wow. I've been up there. I gotta say, I've worked. I had the opportunity to work with three good wind actors. James Caan did some great wind work. Mm -hmm. uh, Streep in Out of Africa. I had an, I had a small mm -hmm. role in Out of Africa. I was one of the little. Is that where you learned boys. about chameleons? Yes, in Africa. You and know who's a real chameleon is Meryl Streep, and that's not a blanketed statement. That woman could become anything. Oh God, are you kidding? Have you seen Death Becomes Her when she became Goldie Hawn? Oh, did I ever? So I yes. Mean, well, I'm going to do what I said last time. No. Because it worked well last time. It, was like, it allowed me to have like a four-minute break. Do you want to watch Death Becomes Her, or have you seen it? I'd love to watch it if you have it on Laserdisc. I might. Let's watch it. Do we have time? We'll just stop it again. Okay. <laughs> Two hours later. Um, I got I got that uh, inspired to get uh, wow. uh, a, a tube television like that again. Yeah. Because I, I went into the store in Burbank that had uh, just a lot of VHS stuff. I just love. I never had a laser disc growing up, but I bought a laser disc, and I thought I had. So anyway, the clarity. I how mean, good is Bruce Willis? Oh, my God. When he did that scene where he comes out the door and he's standing there and he looks around the room and he, there's a wall. And uh, there, I think there was a chair on the, uh, on the floor. And, I got you another cactus cooler. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Yep. But I got to tell you. It's your third one. Are you sure you want I'm it? Okay. You want to I can drink a lot of them. I can drink a whole patch. I also filled up another tea for myself. Uh, but the clarity you get with laser discs that you don't get with any other thing, like your eyes can pick up the different, uh, the difference in the pixels. Uh, I noticed when I watch a VHS tape or I just watch a high def TV, I'll see about 
1,200,000 1, pixels per square unit. But when I watch a laser disc, I'll pick up 3,220 pixels per inch uh, capacity square uh, Sorry, flexicon. Head, headphones off. Could you say that exactly again, what you just said while I was getting the drinks? Sure. My cunt's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it, especially with Trump. Wow, holy lumpity dump. You're talking about our country, right? No, I was talking about lumpity dump mumple bumps. He's one of the <laughs> new characters, characters from, from Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Jinx, me. you owe me a cactus cooler. Well, right. well, well, you can have a of sentences. Yeah. Mm. Harlan. Harlan? Yeah. Harlan, you're one of my faves, oh, dude. Love having you here. We'll gulp that. Love having you here so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I love being here, bro. That page, nothing, oh, nothing, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt, but nothing... Warms my heart more than sleeping, uh, sitting around talking to you on a moving van blanket. And uh, this is nice. <laughs> it's good. Oh, no, oh, there it is. Probably uh, U Haul. I was going to say the movers. Well, U Haul is a mover. Yeah, I just, we're trying to get a sponsorship with a few different moving companies, and I didn't want to. Well, I can't speak to that. I'm with Cactus Cooler. I, don't I get it. Harlan, the, uh, the, the Patreon that we did where I was high oh, and yeah. you were just. Um, uh, you just, it was your birthday. Right. And you, uh, I came on your podcast. Yes. Um, much like Bill Clinton did on, on, uh, you know what? I'm going to switch it up. Like Bill Clinton did in Hillary Clinton. Say what now? And it was your birthday. And then, uh, you went and played racquetball and then you met up with me and we did a Patreon yeah. episode where you were, um, uh, relatively not as silly in a great way, just as funny. Oh, but whoa. you were, you were an energy that you even said to me. Uh, during it, you go, this is just Patreon, right? Because right. when I do main podcasts, I have to bring a certain type of thing. You got it. So this, this is a Patreon delivery for me. Right. This was not your well, podcast delivery for me. That's good ending for the pot, uh, for the for the YouTube thing. So we could end it there. Well, I got what that meant. I get what that meant. I also thought that mm -hmm. was so funny. Something I never asked you that sure. I want to ask you now is, Lay it on could me. you explain that? Because sure. you were you were talking to me in a way like I was the silliest I've been out of all of them, yeah. and you were reacting to it and silly and playful. But you were, as you said, mm -hmm. not main page, not main podcast right. channel energy. Right? Could you explain what you meant by that and the why? When you come to a podcast, Re really asking by the way, I understand that and I hear that and I'm processing that and I'm going to really answer. If you could just shut the pie hole for a second. Um, when I do a podcast, I bring it to this level, mm -hmm. you know, podcast is the top tier. When I do a Patreon, it's a different arena. It's a different energy. Mm -hmm. It's a different level. Explain what that means. Is it better, worse, higher, less? It's not better or worse. It's just a different emotional level. It's a, it's a different gear. And it's a different place I like to drop into mm -hmm. because if I stay at the same gear for everything, it becomes boring, redundant, and causes syphilis. But BRS. No thanks, but I'll take a grilled cheese. You know what? Let me feed it to you. Delish. Whoa. So you would never do that on a Patreon. What? But but no, but really asking, is is there a safety, a different type of safety in one or the other? For example, much sillier, there's a safety in the game. And calmer, there's a safety in not needing to perform. So there's could be either or. Could you explain what those two things mean? There's no safety. No difference in safety. There's no difference and there's no perform. It's just a state of being. You come into something. Is this important like, that I say this? Perform? Yes. Then maybe that's the wrong. You it and I have a different definition. Wrong. Definitely wrong. Uh, what I mean by perform, I, I don't mean that in a superficial sense. I mean that right. quite literally. Performative, energy, a certain type of like, like when we're looking at Powder Toast Man and pooping in each other's butts, that's more performance based. Well... Maybe for you. The audio only people are scratching their head going, Dee! like they have heads. Okay. But like, do you ever do stand up? And uh, 
you're just not in a silly mood. And it doesn't mean you're in a bad mood. Yeah. You're just like, I just want to talk. Yeah. You're not doing the thing that you normally do, which is so great. But there is, speaking for myself, sometimes I'm just up there and I'm, I'm, I'm just talking. Yeah. And it doesn't feel as performative, not for better or for worse. I, I could tell you pros and cons of both if we get into this conversation. Yeah. But it seems sim- like we are getting into this conversation. Similar to you, I, I'm, I think I love to live in that play state. Um, and it's a very authentic place to be. Sometimes when I am not in that, but still able to be present and, and do a stand up and just be more, not more honest um, as far as I'm dishonest, but more honest as in more in touch with what I'm feeling as opposed to how I think and see things. Yes. So I'll talk about the whys as opposed to already understanding them and either deconstructing or making fun of or heightening. Yes. Do you really understand what I'm saying? I do. So sometimes, the first time you came on here, the back half, or even the back third, I'll say, if you don't mind, we we started real silly. We had just met. We got real silly. And then we got into stuff. Yeah. And that's where I'm sure I would love you just as much if that never happened. But I fell in love with you during that podcast because we had both the play, serious play. And then I saw the spiritual side of you and like the the genuine side, not that play is disingenuous, right. but you can't see it the same. Of course. I could connect with play, but then you get to see who Harlan is, not just how he plays. Both things matter. Yes. So what does that other side feel like if you typically only save it for Patreon or do it less often? Do you understand? I mean, I, yes. mean, I don't know if I'm leading you enough, but without no, answering anything it. specific, could you speak on that? It's two different worlds my friend there's the mm-hmm. real world which one is that that's the world where, where there's no cameras it's me and you right. sitting in a starbucks engaging but does the cameras have anything to do with it because we could sit in a starbucks play or we could sit in a starbucks and have genuine like this is genuine right earlier was played do the cameras have anything to do with real world mm. or the intention of how we're communicating it's 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 all about the stage metaphorical or physical or real Mm -hmm. when you're on the stage in my mind you're committed to the stage but the stage is a a slave to the stage A stage is a perspective not a literal thing for example we're on a podcast that's a stage but now we're being serious we're kind of off the stage behind the curtains right so is this the real world what we're talking about right now to you no okay this is, I don't belong to this space. This space owns me. I'm like, a, I'm at the mercy of this space. Why? Because it's an entity. It's an energy. Uh-huh. And so when I step into it, it directs me. It takes over. See what I'm saying? <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, But I'm able, but right now I'm not feeling that. You're not. I, I was up until two minutes ago. Yeah. And now it's like, hold on a sec. Hold on. Turn it off if you want or whatever. Hold on a second. It's almost like when, I, when you're playing with somebody, not improv, but like it could be improv. I'm playing anything. And then there's like, there's a disconnect. Maybe maybe I don't know the rules or you don't know the rules. Hold on one sec. Time out one sec. Actually, I want to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Like that thing. Yeah. Like what we did, which like a, we edited it out, but like a lot of the in-betweens of all the stuff like that was hold on a second let let's let's press pause let's have a real let's connect on something so we can get back on the same page yeah. to play cuz what i find with you okay. is we are on the same page with play we don't need to set any rules i show up authentically you show up authentically we both play with each other we're best friends and it's beautiful and that's beautiful yeah every now and then we might have to be like wait hold on a second are are you joking or does it matter or could you explain this or could we actually record a different whatever the thing is yeah those little pockets if the person can't be serious you can't connect on that level yeah so i'm talking about those two levels the play level and the i don't want to say this this this, this the, the non-play level yeah whether you're on stage or off stage is a kind of a different conversation i want to better understand with you because right now you're a non-play relatively the the energy, the voice, 
what's happening uh-huh. doesn't allow me to talk about that. Ever? Not really. But you're doing it. Sort Even talking of. about the voice is doing it. Right, but it's all being dictated by the force that's around us. But it's it just it just controls me. You know what I mean? I do. So I can never go too deep into it. I just have to let it float and be. Is that through experience? Have you tried to go too deep into it and it didn't work out well for you? Is that no, why? No, no, it's not. You feel it's unable. not hiding behind anything or masking anything. It just it's. I understand. It's a burning sun, and you have to let it burn. Uh-huh. Do you so, mean that, is that that metaphor sounds painful? Do you mean it that no, way? Oh, it's you beautiful, just it, right? It's beautiful, awesome. but if you if you just <laughs> if you unpeel it too much, the sun dies. So you have to just let the sun burn and rage. Have you ever experienced um, <laughs> if your skin and your melatonin in this comedy uh, metaphor doesn't make you burn as easily as other people? And have you been around other people that out in the sun that long makes them burn and you had to or chose to or not to adapt with them? No, no. It's just that it, I, I know it's tough because you want to you want to dissect this thing, but you can't. I disagree. It won't let me dissect it. I believe that. If I open it too much and dissect it, it dies. How do you know if you've never done it? I know. I just I <laughs> trust in it and I believe it. So I have to I have to let the sun burn. I can't open it and let it You're scared to cuz it'll no. kill it or you can't. Those are two different things. No, I just uh, it's not what I want to do. It's what it directs me to do. It's, I, it's I'm like confused a, because know, we're doing it right now. No, no, no. Not with what you're saying. Right. I'm confused with, with believing it because we're doing it right now. We are to an extent. Yes. But not to the fullest extent. It doesn't have to be to the fullest extent. Right. We didn't literally have diarrhea on each other to right. the fullest extent. Right. We didn't need to. Right. But I'm saying there's there's more I could go into it, but but I, I won't. I can't. I can't. It, I, it wouldn't be good to do it. Okay. Because it's um, it's not out of fear. It's for it won't let me right. It like just a, like guides a magnetic me. Force. It's yeah, yeah. It sounds strange, but I always listen to the voice. Mm-hmm. I respect it. I I, I I like that. Yeah, I don't let it um, open up any more than it needs to. It tells me when to stop. What happens when you're writing something I don't, by yourself? I don't write. You have cartoons. Oh, stuff like that, yeah. But when it comes to comedy, I don't write. I've been on your podcast when you wrote things that you read to me. Well, oh, okay. I'm saying when you literally write. Oh, okay, yeah. You're sitting in your office. Uh Uh-huh. Probably, like, maybe you, I don't know if you lick the pen. Maybe you go like this. When you're trying to think of something, you try to think of something, you can't, you go back to it. Oh, you get excited about something. Yeah. That is you being aware. Yes. Of play that will later take. Right, right. Pun intended? Whoa. Power so what drop. I'm saying is there are moments where you are sitting in and aware of, of it, but not playing. That's the same thing of what I'm talking about. You're just doing it in a conversation. Right. Well, now, now it feels like uh, as, uh, uh, projecting onto the audience listening. I'm like, I'm like, I'm really digging at something that the, the ground is cold. Maybe we need a little more sun to heat on it. But so you never go on stage and just show yourself more. Of course, yes, I can. I, I, <laughs> of course, I can. I can <laughs> make sure that we animate a lot of those crows came down and they're tickling under his armpits while he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was your question? <laughs> I'm not uh I'm not as interested anymore. <laughs> okay. Or I don't believe that uh Yeah, I don't want to force anything is, yeah. is a better way of saying it. I'm okay. not disinterested. I just don't want to force anything. Yeah, it's like I I, I have my limits of what I'll yeah. answer. That that I yeah. that I respect. If it's a boundary, I I would have stopped a while ago. But it's not to not want to share with you or anyone. It's just it it won't let me. It won't let me. I do understand. Go over the wall in certain ways. 
I know it sounds totally, totally, totally ridiculous to it, anyone it, watching. It, do, it, it doesn't sound ridiculous to me. I, oh, I, okay. I really, really understand. You do? I do. Oh, good. Okay. I, I really, don't want to insult you by not answering. I'm not. Okay. I also, I, the confusion I'm having, I think is, I think you're asking me to, um, I think you think I'm asking you to give me your social security number, <laughs> but I'm just asking what state you were born in. I'm not asking <laughs> right. you to open up and who is the real... Yeah. This is the real. Yeah. I'm not asking that. I yeah. believe me, I get that. I'm I'm, t I'm I'm on a much more superficial level. Yeah. Uh, um and it was coming just from the Patreon energy yes. to this energy, not this. Yeah. This is more similar to the Patreon one. It is. Uh, yeah, give yeah. or take. Depends because I was so silly and you just can't help but mirror it. Yeah. But um but like I just mean that. I just mean when is it like Playing with words, uh, playing with words, and doing rhyming thing, and 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 deconstructing stuff, and being silly—that's relatively more playful, yeah, than what you're than this, yeah. And I'm just talking about those two different things. You don't need to define them more than that. You don't yeah. need to explain uh, 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 all the whys. I'm only asking of you made a conscious choice to be this version during Patreon, right? You made arguably a less conscious choice, just followed your instincts more to be this version on this episode right. and the other ones we've done. I want to know the why. Like, it's not because people will get bored if you're always the same thing. It's not like you yeah. have this huge Patreon career and you want to give people Patreon Harlan yeah. and then main channel Harlan. Yeah. It was just, I felt you showed up and like, hey, this is just Patreon, right? I don't have to be... Right. I, it's my birthday. We already did an episode earlier. I went to dinner. I played racquetball. I don't have the yeah. juice. So it's fine. Right. That's how I took it. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I had the juice, but it's just uh, the, 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 the moment in time was telling me to put it here. So it really wasn't about Patreon necessarily. It no. Was, no. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. I didn't believe it was just about the Patreon. Well, it was. To, it, it was a variable. It was a variable, but it was. It was. Look, to me, like Patreon is like playing a game in a sports league, and a podcast is being in the playoffs. So the game gets upped. Well, in that metaphor, yeah. you're saying that this is more important. Because uh, a playoff game is more important than a regular season game, and that's the that's the, right. But it's still the other one's still just as important, but it's a different level of playing. You know, it's right because it, it's not as important. Right, it's very hard to express because I don't put parameters around any of it. Mm -hmm. I believe that, and so it's such a free flowing thing, and it's hard to get your head around, maybe, but. I don't want it to sound pretentious or weird, but it's just, I, I don't know. It's just, I hardly even like to talk about it because it's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I, it's, it's the, 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 the less I expose it to the world, the, the more it just affects me. In a good way. Yeah. In my favorite way. In the way I live. Well, without crossing any boundaries, to yeah. me, that's a version of safety in what I'm talking about. I You're see. safer by not, and you have every right to not, especially publicly. I get that. But that's something that I'm missing that I want to better understand because you're so brilliant and good at what <sighs> you do. I also see some similarities that I'm, maybe I'm crazy, but just in the way we, you see things and I see things and connect. Yeah. There is some similar things there yeah. that I want to better understand and maybe even borrow from. Because yeah. yours comes from such a place of positivity, and mine usually does. Oh, good. But there are times where it's not, and I don't catch it until the edit, or if somebody is able to communicate to me in the moment. Yeah. And when that happens, some listen. It's fun to play arrogant and to and to 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 bully or whatever. That's play. I don't mean that. Yeah. But like to really sometimes to get annoyed in it. There's a, you just have, um, I don't see that in you. Yeah. But I know it is. You're a human being. Yeah. So I wanted to just better, I wanted to better understand, but I'm talking way too much now and, and I definitely don't mean or want to cross a boundary. No, it's okay. But that's, it's the less you tell people about it, 
I'm not asking you to tell more. The yeah. less you tell people about it, the safer, in a way, your thing is. Would you say it's more superstitious or more like a magician? If a magician explains his tricks, they're no the, the illusion, they become less magic and more illusion. Neither. There's no trickery. There's no illusion. It just... It's just a, it's just a river flowing, beautiful through. It's like very Buddhist. Yeah, and the only time you ever get beyond it is if you're like a beautiful woman laying beside me in my bed, and we're staring into each other's eyes. That's the only time you feel that you show that Harlan, and then it just opens up because beauty and passion just knocks everything away. You know, so you're saving that thing for just a uh romantic relationship i don't know what it is i just know that 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 like it just lets itself out when when you're around that it's weird now this doesn't have to be someone you're in love with this is because it's right just a woman that you just met that you're attracted to that is attracted to you and you like each other and now there's there's three harlans correct me if i'm wrong maybe there's more there's at least three there's playoff main channel podcast harlan there's just as important, but regular season Patreon Harlan. Those are the two that everybody knows, except for the secret third Harlan, which is a beautiful woman makes eye contact with you. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, you know what? There's no Harlan. Okay. All right. No. Honestly, you can't, I can't, I can't put anything in a cage. I can't. Why do you have to put it in a cage? I just, in my, in my head, it's just the, 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 the Think of me as a uh, a bunch of leaves falling off a tree. I often do. Yeah, I'm, there's no this Harlan. That they're just. But even just, trees, fa- just, even leaves fall I off know. the tree due to the seasons, the weather, <laughs> the lack of sun, the extra sun. There are forces <laughs> like a main channel Patreon, like a summertime, yeah. that affects the trees' leaves. You already told me that there is a different version that comes out that you right. don't understand when you're talking to a woman, and now you're backing away from no, that. No, I'm not. I'm just saying all this stuff exists, but you don't want to talk about it too much. You don't want to. You just want to let it float around, man. So you're. It, it's completely out of your control. E- you never make the choice. You know what? Today I want to be able to do this. You cannot do that. I can. But I'm guided by whatever, of course, the forces are that whatever. guide me. Of course, not that I'm. I don't know. I don't. I don't even want to know the answers. These are great questions, but I don't want to know the answers to them. Okay. I don't want to, and it's not because I'm being a douche bonnet about Nothing it. Nothing about this. Is I don't want to have any parameter around any aspect of what i may think i am or what people might think i am so it's better just to be a a floating cloud of right god you're good god uh uh, on a scale from one to ten ten being the most one being the least yeah how much do you want to direct uh things that you make like like Luke. like if you were to be uh, an actor in a movie, maybe you even wrote it, maybe you just wrote it, like yeah. in the entertainment business. Yeah. How much are you interested in directing? Because you just directed your first feature. Yeah. How much did you enjoy that? And is that something you want to keep doing? Yeah, I want to keep doing it. I loved it. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And it was, there was moments when I was, you know, it was very tough because I was... I wrote the movie, I directed it, and I starred in it. And so I'm jumping from in front of the camera to behind the monitor. I'm directing the other actors, blah, blah, blah. And it, well, there were moments of complete euphoria where I was just, I felt connected to all of it, where I was just, I was like, wow, this is where I'm supposed to be. It was, it was beautiful. And those moments where you weren't connected that way. Were they obstacles? Was it challenging? That's part of the craft. How did that? No, feel? those were those were moments when I was so engaged in every aspect of the film, from what's that spot on the wall to why isn't her costume right? What are the lines? Where are you positioned? What's the camera? All the technical stuff. So that's the analogy I'm trying to explain. Right. You as the performer in it, yeah, is different than you behind. Why isn't she in this? 
this needs to be this way. I, I have a vision I want it to be. That is a sense of control. Yeah. You're yeah. controlling this outcome for this vision of this yes, movie that you is yours, to. that you're being guided through. Yeah. But as is life and as is re- as our relationships, yeah. sometimes you're present, you're in the moment, you're connecting, and sometimes you have to be like, I don't like being around this person. I don't like their energy. I don't like the way this person spoke. I do like this person. This person makes me feel good. When you're dating somebody, there's 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 compromise, there's give and take, there's, there's awareness yes. that you have to tap in and you know what as much as i want to be silly hocus pocus harlan now's not the time your your girlfriend's uh sister is in the hospital and you need to comfort her in a way that she may need maybe she needs you to make her laugh maybe you don't feel like making her laugh but you're going to tap into that anyway all of these moments are are all you all guided but they are different versions yeah sometimes we are able to make a conscious choice to bring that certain version yeah you did it in this movie set. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Right. And that's all valid. And that's all. Are you? You're bang on. But? But there's another level that just never gets, never gets categorized. It's just an entity. And that's where I like to float when I'm on stage or when I'm yeah. doing this stuff. Do you ever not want to perform, but you have something booked? Say what now? <laughs> You ever like you have a show tonight? I just don't want to perform. You ever feel that way? Yeah, but but that's the beauty of it because I take that mindset, that energy up there with me. That's what I'm asking, and it becomes forced into what it yes. has to be, which is just showing up authentically, whatever right. you're it's feeling. Beautiful, yeah, right, right, and it's um, it's magical, yeah. Are you gonna keep directing? Yeah, I've already written my next script. Yeah, did you lick the pen? Did I lick the pen while you were writing, or was people do that? They lick the pen. I don't know why, but no, I get the juices going. I just I keep I have a I have a um, aquarium full of squid, and I just like like squeeze the whole thing. I don't I don't want to taste the ink. I want to drink it. Right. So I'll just squeeze the shit out of a squid and drink it. Um. But yeah, I want to keep doing it. It's it's uh, it's amazing. Directing or acting? Could you say the pros and cons to both? Acting, I love, but I feel like I've done so much of it. I like. I feel like segueing into more directing is something newer and fresher for me. So I love. I love to do both, but directing is. Um, it's just. I don't know. It's it's beautiful to just look through that lens mm-hmm. and and see people come to life and help them and guide them if they need it and see what they bring on their own. It's, it's very stimulating for me, you know? You, uh, I don't know if it made it in or not because there was a lot of direction given to you during this. Yeah. And I said at least one time, I said, thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, you, not that there's anything wrong with questioning because sometimes you want to, you should always uh, try and understand, I guess, or at least if you want to. So if you questioned, I wouldn't have taken anything personally, but either you got it or it didn't matter to you. But everything that I asked you to do, it was just like you were very uh, receptive. Yeah. Um, I find that is usually the case on this podcast. However, there are some people, It's there's a spectrum of it. Yeah. And uh, I don't even talk to you. I just, hold on, I just talk to me and John Michael to the camera. You just listen, and you're just down for anything. Do you think your ability to receive direction uh, so well, how much of that is experience as an actor, and how much of that is what you're saying is just the force, what will be, will be? It's, it's just listening. You know, direction is listening, and... If someone's directing you and you're doing something together and you have a vision of the outcome of that thing and someone's helming that thing, then you, it's in your best interest to listen and go along with it and help them help you fulfill your, damn crows, fulfill your vision. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's good. I like it. It's, um, it's fulfilling to to be directed knowing you're going to be getting an end result for that person. 
because on your podcast, when you have both me on and I've watched when you have guests on, it's you become a director. You I have, do? Yeah. Or, and or uh, a, 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 a writer, at least. You set up these games. You have these bits that you want to do to your guest or with your guest. Yeah. And you're coming in and here's what we're doing. And then here, you're very receptive to me, who's that way in a different yeah. way. Here's what I want to be doing. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's fun to see. To, I mean, the two of us together, it's a completely different show on your podcast and my podcast. And that's not based on any defined tone. It's just on your podcast, I do believe you take on a role of controlling more. I do? I think so. And I don't mean that in any type of negative no, way. No, I didn't take it as that. But yeah. Huh, you come here. You're still you. But when you're here, it feels to me very... Um, you come and you bring stuff to the table and you also uh, you, you also say, you know, you make a lot of room for, for my stuff. Yeah. And when I come on yours, and I, I, this is in a nice way, there's not as much room at the table for me to bring my stuff. There isn't? Not. I'll have to. That's, all, that's, no, that's only because oh. I bring so much stuff. Yeah. I, this is not a complaint in the slightest. I could it say, could be, though. I'd be open to it. I love it. I love it because it's a different dynamic. It's it's a completely different dynamic. Yeah. And it's also, I am controlling and it's good for You're me. You're a controlling person? I'm a particular person. And in order to get that particular thing that I want, if the other person isn't the same, I either have to make compromises or control the situation. Wow. And I have, that's something I've always been, not always, but it's something I work on and I, I'm very happy with it. I, I like what it is. I have a, a yeah. vision of things. I want it to be that way. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, well, another word of say, calling it controlling, because I mean that quite literally, is is saying I'm standing up for myself. But sometimes that's not that's not playful if that's all you're doing and the other person isn't. Yeah. So when I come on your podcast, I notice that there has been times where I had to like, I've had to tell myself on the podcast, like in my head, take it easy to myself wow. because I'm stepping on your thing. Oh, geez. Don't ever think like that. I hope I'm not doing it much. I'm sure it no. happened at least sometimes, but Whoa. it could have happened more if I wasn't aware of that. Like I see it a certain way. I want to, I want I, I, either something I set up and I want it to go this way or something you set up and I want to change it. I mean, it's basic improv stuff, just yes, anding and listening. But I had such experience with you where it was so everything I wanted to do, you were down and then the other way around, to, to my fault, if it's not going the way I yet see it, yeah. And what I've learned of of the of how to make that easier for me is I need to trust the other person. Yeah, um, trust is huge. If cameras weren't on, I wouldn't feel that way. But since this is a product that I am part of, it that I do not get to edit, I want to be able to show up for the playoffs. Yeah. And the better way for me to show up for the playoffs isn't to keep shooting, and that's something just to work on and continually nice. do yeah. so. But you on your podcast are shooting. I am. At, and you're supposed to. Yeah. And you're making them, by the way. And then when you come here, it's it's not as much yeah. in, in, a, in a great way. And, and that's where I'm trying to better understand, too, because like I want to be able to go on other podcasts. And if, I've, if I'm in the mood, take over in a way how I've been talking way too much just now. No, it's good. But I don't want to have to do that. And sometimes like when I watch, I watch my guest appearances now. You do? Uh, yeah. It's the same reason why I, I knew it was beneficial to watch my podcast. I'll watch stuff and I'll be like, oh, Rick, it was too much. Like you're, 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 it's not, if I'm too much, so be it, because I am. But if my too much steps on other people's ideas, I get, I'm very turned off by myself with that. I see, yeah. And in a moment, I don't know I'm doing it. It's, it reminds me of when I was a kid. I do a bit on stage where I talk about not having friends as a kid, but not knowing I didn't have friends. And, because kids would come over sometimes or there'd be group things, I would always want to wrestle or box, do yeah. physical stuff. And when kids say they didn't want to, maybe in a similar way to you being like, Rick, I don't want to talk about this. And I'm like, no, no, maybe you don't understand. You know, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. we, we'll do we'll do wrestling in a different way. It won't hurt you. Yeah. And I like forced people to play the way I wanted to play. Right. And like looking back, Jesus Christ, Rick, that's of course nobody wanted to play with you. No. And then I see, I see some of that sometimes when I do podcasts with people and I just don't like it. Well, that's, well, that's uh, being self-aware and you're learning you're, more self-aware. You're learning from yourself. Yeah. And the, the podcasts are exposing you to yourself. 
mm-hmm. and making you better at where you want to be and where you want to go. Yeah. So it's not only just entertaining, but you're educating yourself. That's nice. It's great. It's great. And it's hard. It's a hard watch. Is it that hard? Is it really that? It's gotten easier. There, there were a lot of episodes I didn't want to post. Some I didn't. Um, of yours? Few, when it first started. When it first oh, started. Wow. Yeah. And then I, I made a decision that like, because just like comedy sets, some are good, some aren't. If you know, if like you have somebody who's coming to see you for something that you want to do well, uh, whether it's somebody who you might be writing something with or if it's somebody that you're dating, you know, like if you care like I've always felt like you can't come to one of my sets. You have to come to at least five and average them out because they're so different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I felt that, way, and that, but by doing this podcast every week, I got to a point where it's like one episode is not defining anything, even if people falsely think it does. It's a you're just capturing me and my guest at a moment in time with whatever energy we had going into it and whatever energy we built together, and so be it. If you're boring, if you're funny, if you're not funny, if you're mean. There's a couple episodes where I noticed I was playing a little rough. You were? You were mean? I don't think I was mean. I think that I was uh, I was playing a little rough. What does that mean, though? There is an episode. Do you know John Rutnitsky? No. Um, shout out to John Rutnitsky. I'll put up his thumbnails here. He's unbelievably funny. And he's Jewish and neurotic in a very similar way to me. And he's talks about his feelings and he's very open. But he's also talks about his feelings. Sometimes it was like, ah, I shouldn't say this. And then and I say, then don't. Because I then don't. Yeah. He goes, no, it's fine. We'll do this. And and then later he want he feels vulnerable and maybe wants some of it edited out. Oh, wow. That's his thing. I he's he's brilliant. There was a time he came on where we made a deal to to get stoned. And uh, this was during COVID when I was doing everything on my balcony. He was on the balcony. I was inside. <laughs> and on the way here, he said he didn't want to get stoned for reasons that made sense. But I had already taken a fair amount of edibles. Okay. So it, it is what it is. One yeah. of us one of us, is stoned and sober was the name of the episode. Yeah. And I'm already me. And when I'm high, it's a little bit more. So I'm making jokes and he's being self-deprecating. And it took me a while to realize because that's his shtick. Yeah. But also he meant it. So some of the things he was saying that I was then playing the bully into, totally joking, he was playing back. But also, as he said, and I picked up like toward the end, I think, if not late in the middle, he, I'm like, I just realized you're being serious. and I'm being mean to you. Oh, shit. And he goes, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. And then I was like, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> and I kept going. And and it was, I mean, there was no hard feelings. I believe that. We spoke numerous times after. But just watching it, I could tell. And I couldn't in the moment. And it made you feel like mad at yourself or? I, I turned off more than mad. Like I understand who I am. I love who I am. I've accepted who I am. I'm also oftentimes, sometimes reminded that as far as I've come with my awareness and and my, uh, my, uh, uh, my intentions, Either I haven't come as far as I thought or more so I think you regress sometimes. Yeah. You just play is is where you I live and that's where I think you do too. And when you're that, it is, it's just, it's all good, man. <laughs> when you're playing basketball, I'm never trying to hurt somebody, but sometimes you foul somebody. That wasn't my yeah. intention, but like it is, I'm sorry, it's my bad. It's your ball. But like, that's not going to affect the way we see each other. Yeah. That's part of, that's operational cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other people in play don't live that life. They don't believe it's all good, it's in play. Yeah. And I understand that side, but I sometimes miss that. I had, I had Giannis Papas, you know Giannis? Oh God, one of my favorite breakfast cereals. It's, they're delicious, but I'm talking about a comedian. Oh. He's been on a couple of times and I, I edited some of it out uh, and we what? talked about what I'm about to say, but... We got in a play thing and we were like dancing and then getting a little physical. And then I get really physical and like I love to wrestle and play. And I used to want to play fight with people. Slap box, real boxing, wow. fighting. I love it. I, yeah. I used to love it a lot. Oh, man. Did you hit him? No, but I, I got on top of him. And because we were doing something sometimes before YouTube started flagging everything, we would suck each other's penises and get fucked in the butt and stuff. I fucked Santino in the butt. He's fucked me in the butt. Lots of blowjobs. 
And okay. I, I started, I got on top of Yana and I was like getting aggressive with him. And then we were playing and then it was over and it was funny. And then I noticed that the energy shifted some. Oh, he was pissed. He, he handled it like a pro. Um, and he didn't even say anything because he was fine. He knew I was joking or he assumed. But after a couple minutes, I'm like, what am I missing here? And then he said, I, you know, that was a bit much. I love that he told me. I love that he told me. Yeah, I wouldn't have known. Because it was real. I wouldn't have known. I thought, oh, we're both in the same page. We're joking around. Yeah. But I crossed a boundary that I didn't realize. Wow. I apologized. We spoke about it after. I do think it brought us closer. We ended up talking about stuff, blah, 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 blah. But the point is, had he not told me that, I might not have picked up until the edit when I watched him. And figured it out. Whoa. Even John Michael, who was editing, we talked about it because like, it was really funny. But it was, we edited it, we sh shortened it. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I showed it to Giannis. I'm like, is this okay? And he goes, yes, that's actually really funny. I didn't show all of it. Not that all of it got much worse. It just went on longer than it Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Um, but I asked his permission beforehand. And it was fun. And in my head, I knew we would edit it down some. In my head, I was picturing what it would be. We're playing. I get what this is. We're just having a good time. Yeah. Our clothes were on. We animated them off. Yeah. But like, <laughs> in my head, it was about the edit. In his head, it was, we're, I don't like this. So wow. when I showed him the edit, he goes, oh, I understand what you were talking about. That makes sense. That's really funny. But I didn't explain to him. Yeah. I didn't say, hey, could I talk to you about boundaries for a second? We were just playing, heightening, heightening. I got on his back. I was grabbing him. I was pretending Whoa. to. It was too much, man. Why didn't he say anything in the moment? He might not have been touched in the moment. He might not have felt comfortable enough to. Maybe he. it's fine. He just didn't like it. And after he sat in it and thought, it, what it came down to, what he at least told me was, it's okay. I just didn't like it. Wow. And it wasn't minutes. It was, you know, like 15 seconds. Oh, wow. But so still, a quickie. Much like a pooping on somebody. But, you know, I used to really have diarrhea on people until it bothered people. And now we animate it. Wow. Um, Anyway, I held this last 25 minutes hostage. Have you? Did you make up with Yanni's poppies? On the podcast, we edited the private stuff out. Um, but I wouldn't have cared as much. I don't even need to say that. It's just we had real conversation about stuff, and we talked about stuff, and I edited out the stuff. We kept in some of the... That was weird, so people understood where the energy Whoa. ship had. Um, but, uh, but afterwards, after the cameras turned off, um, we talked for like 45 minutes, and it was wonderful and then we took a walk we got some food and it was great it was connecting you know I, I took accountability um did you air the episode eventually yeah it's the second Giannis episode he came on wow that's heavy man what a trip um what a mind bender but because of just flowing with whatever the sun and the energies give that turns me into that yeah. I'm like I become a werewolf. That's crazy though. That's but I, but heavy. So I have to, which I was asking you, sometimes yeah. make conscious decisions of whatever the energy is taking me, I will maybe miss some cues and boundaries and I'll play too tough, too rough. Mm. So sometimes I have to make the choice and that's why I do need to check in with the why. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I see myself being playful. Some people I don't have to. With you, with Santino, I don't feel that way. Santino. Uh, I don't feel that way. And that's that's not, I don't mean that as flattering as it comes across. I do love it. But I mean that in a more transactional way. Like for whatever reason, I feel like you and I fit in a certain way where, I don't know. It just doesn't. It's like the avatar. Remember I said yeah. earlier? Yeah. The hare and the horse. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're avatars. Maybe. But when I come on your podcast, uh, I do, be, based on this awareness, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I do tell myself, not as, Rick, you know, you maybe do. let maybe I'll be the horse. We'll still be connected, but let me be the horse and you be the avatar that's kind of controlling it. Just so you know, guy, you do whatever the fuck you want on my podcast. I don't, no boundaries. You come in and do whatever you yeah, want. I believe that. Don't worry about it. Let it fly. I do think it would behoove me to, to be aware if I when I step on other people. I love what I do, wow. as long as as some people you don't need to make space for. They know how to take their space. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Some people, if I don't make space for them, then I'm taking up all the space. I can see that. Um, and it it, it took me a while to recognize even those kind of because in my family, 
everybody was able to create their own space. That's what, what do you, you mean? Your family was on MySpace? No, no, no. I mean, we could all... Hold on a second. I'm saying something. Right. Like, we all could be... Found a way to make ourselves be heard. Or at least knew how to try to, whether or not that was successful. I've met people as I got older that I realized not everybody... Some people are like, whatever. It's not worth it to them. If you want to take space, take your space. I'm fine yeah. sitting here. But that's not letting them shine. And it's not my job to give you space. But as a collaborator, it is my responsibility to not take it away. And you have to know when and where. Like with you, I don't ever feel like I'm taking it away. Never. Um, and I'm glad to hear that. I could be wrong. But with some people, I've realized in when watching, oh, they were just letting me do my thing. And maybe they were okay with it, but that didn't allow them to do theirs. And that's where I get I'm, I'm sensitive to because how I did that as a kid without being aware. Huh. But now it's mostly verbal, right? It's just... Yeah, yeah by space. Just, I don't mean yeah. physical space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. that was a very specific example of yeah. something that, that was um, uh, me forcing a friend to wrestle and thinking they wanted to, which was like <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. But I mean space of just like... Like I've acknowledged this is, I think, my fourth time now, but now for like a half hour, I've been taking up a lot of space. No. I have. Not really. Maybe it hasn't upset you, but I've been talking a whole bunch. I know. I love it. Well, thank you. I am very, in, I get insecure with that because I've become aware, I've only become aware for six or seven years that I do that stuff. So I sometimes want to go like this. No, no, no. It's awesome. Well, anyway, this is what has just happened is what I meant by the less playful version of me, which is still aware that cameras are on. Yeah. Compared to the first part of this podcast. Maybe we should dump the first part of this podcast. Uh -uh. Like, I would maybe get rid of it. Put it just on Patreon? Maybe just, like, delete it. Maybe. Just start off with uh, the stuff that's not funny. Probably. Why not? It's the 90s. No. You're not wrong. Some of my favorite podcasts, based off of the connection I made with my guests, um, that's pretty much the format. It's not... I now know it, but it wasn't always conscious and it usually still isn't. I'm just aware that you start off, you just play. You just do jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes. And either the whole thing stays that way or then it falls off after a half hour, 45 minutes. And then you're like, okay, so what's your name? Yeah. But like, that's my favorite because I think the play chemistry is what once you know you have that, now I'm interested. Yeah. I almost feel it as a metaphor to dating. Like when you on a first date, the idea of like getting to know the person by asking questions and talking, yeah, it it's it feels like we're we're uh, we're, we're writing in 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 pencil and we knowing that the paper is going to go underwater. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> none of this is going to matter. You know, the, yeah. we need a foundation first. Like to, that, turn that pencil into a pen or a marker. You have to play. Yeah, and once you play enough and connect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, all right, so like. Oh, you're from... That makes sense. Yeah. Now you're laying beside her, looking at her in her eyes. There you go. Do you connect with that? Yeah, that's what I said. What about on um, non-romantic friendships? Um. Yeah. Yeah, you... you with those, you probably want to do a nice long road trip or something. Right? Go on. And then it just all comes out it all levels out the road takes you and your friends and their personalities and just opens up is that kind of like how um uh lore says that uh before they filmed the pilot of entourage or at least before they filmed the season one after the pilot they uh they sent the boys to vegas to bond with each other is that what that was That's what i heard i didn't see that series can we watch it Entourage? You've never seen Entourage? I've I've heard of it. I'd love to watch it. Do you have it? <laughs> Thirty nine hours later. Oh man! Yeah. Wow, dude. I know. I actually feel like um. Uh, look at those cards here. Oh, these ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I've showed you, but uh, I make people um superheroes. You do? Yeah, and I'd like to make you one, and I feel like wow. because of how much you connected with Aquaman, 
that having you be Aquaman is also so perfect because you're in such a flow state, like water. Yeah. Like what Bruce Lee says. Yeah, yeah, Bruce Lee. So I see like the Aquaman being like flow state water. Do you connect to that or do you connect to a different superhero? I connect to the Hulk. Interesting. Yeah. He's the only to me he's the only superhero. Well, you know, um because he's he's raw and he's uncontainable. And that's that's all you really need, and he's real. The other ones are in little costumes. The other well, ones are in little outfits. We already have outfits. my goblin mascot as Hulk. Oh, you did? Yeah, right there. Well, that's a little blasphemous. I mean, you can't have another Hulk. But that's the only. Okay, well then, I'll, should I pick another one? Yeah. I guess I think of myself as the Black Panther a lot. Go on. Well, I just that's how I identify as the Black Panther. Okay, that's a choice. Yeah. Do you have any others? Not really. Once you got emerald green eyes and you've got right. that beautiful you black just like skin. Green. Like well, like but you didn't like that when people were working at SeaWorld. You thought the like the like the black licorice. You right. Thought, Those were the, the idiots that were working with something called killer. But well, black I mean he's he I mean that he's an Avenger. That's there's a lot of killing. The Black happens. Panther? Yeah. I know, but I just I am I supposed what am I supposed to do with these? Yeah, you I'm can not- put them down. I was just showing you the Hulk. Oh. Oh yeah, the water thing. Flow state. And also you connected so much. What was your favorite part? I liked it when uh the guy Vincent Chase. Right. And he was down on Hollywood Boulevard at that red carpet event, and Dimbledorf came out and slapped him around with his gobbledygunk. It was like it was almost like a meeting of uh, Game of Thrones and Death Comes Honor and uh, Avengers or whatever. Uh, Sophie's Choice. What's this show called? Avengers. No, the... the oh, uh, Entourage. Entourage. What did you think about when they were at um, at Park Slope, Utah during... Uh, um, what's the film festival? Sundance. Sundance, yeah. And, uh, oh, God. And uh, Vinny found out that... It, he might not be Aquaman because James Cameron didn't show up to his yeah. movie. And then it all worked out for the boys. What did I you think thought about it that? was cathartic and I thought it was such a great Because he almost gave it to Leo. Leo almost Leo got almost the job got with it. Aquaman yeah. with James Cameron because they were friends since Titanic. At yeah. least since Titanic. And I thought it was cathartic because the way it propelled the the through line mm-hmm. of the series and right. created like this wonderful arc where we saw vincent at the end really come to terms with who he was emotionally right. uh as a man yep. and how he grappled with the the just the the, the landmine that is hollywood interesting and so there was this real dichotomy of vestibage where they a dichotomy what of the vestibage when they they come together what and is a, vest, vest, vest it's when mean? a person looks in the mirror and they expose their karanachich to the <laughs> the flacetoid of their polyniot. It's Greek. It's Latin. It's in th- theater. It's, it's Greek like, or Latin. What, what do you it's mean? It's theater. It's Greek theater. The drama originated in Greece. You know, they had the Parthenon and they right. had the the players, and so there's a lot of Latin terms that right. you might not be familiar with in uh, in drama. But I throw them around because I studied. I want to tell me those words again. I forgot what Palantheon they were. and Corinthian. <laughs> Vestibuge. Wow, that was weird. I, I, I laughed. I'm not even joking. I laughed so weird and my eyes squinted that you went completely in focus. Maybe you need glasses. Well, I, I have glasses. But Why don't you wear them? It's a little bit blurry, but you, like when I squinted, you went in like pure focus. Like Not like you're blurry. You're like a little bit blurry. But just the right. way I laughed at the Greek Corinthians, like you went in perfect focus just for like a few seconds and it was beautiful. Wow. Yeah, weird, right? Yeah. Tripsville, man. You know, for, the, mind for the thumbnail of this episode, maybe I'll take uh, pictures of us, but I was thinking I want to use the picture um, that uh, uh, Troy Conrad took at Adam Ray's... Uh, oh, that's at, a great at, picture of uh, us. Uh, and Amanda's wedding. Yeah, that was a great picture. I yeah, love it. We're sitting on the couch. couch. Yeah, I might. Because I was just oh. thinking on the couch, oh, maybe I'll sit there. We've done that for a thumbnail of ours. Yeah. Sitting on the couch. I'm like, oh, we have that picture of us on a couch. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah. It's my favorite picture, me and you. Your hair looks great in it, too. 
It does. Uh, we'll Those put it up plugs. here. We'll put it up here. Those are hair plugs. No, they're not. I could tell. No, I got air plugs put in. Nice. They look great. Yeah, I got uh, them put in with a Black and Decker drill. It was unbelievable. Uh, I'll put up a picture of it here, uh, just in case it's not the thumbnail, or even if it is, so people could see. Yeah, let, let it ride, Daddy. Yeah. Let the surfer surf. Yeah, we had a nice time. Yeah, they they had a nice wedding. Thanks. You're welcome. I want to go to your wedding. When is it? Well, don't have a don't have a a, a wedding scheduled at the moment. Well, that's not what I asked. I said, when is it? Like roughly, like ballpark. You don't have to give me the exact day. I'm just saying I, I, area. I prefer not to speculate on something like that. But huh. it does sound nice. Sounds like someone doesn't want me at their wedding almost. Interesting. If I made you my best man. Okay. I couldn't make you. If I uh, asked you to be my best man. Yes. And you would say yes. That's a big honor. Um, I'd be a bit confused. Right. Because your best man is usually an old childhood friend, someone who's been in your life forever, very strong, intimate bond. Right. We're friends. We've known each other for about three years. No, we haven't. Two years. I bet my, 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 my guess is less. So maybe I should just be the flower boy? Maybe, but hypothetically. Or the caterer. I could be the caterer. Do you cater weddings? I will for yours since we're so close. What kind of stuff would you do? Grilled cheese? Maybe a sandwich? What's that? Oh, a nut loaf. Whoa, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was another grilled cheese. You wouldn't really want me as your best man. Hypothetically, I'm, I'm just curious what type of speech you would give and how, how much sincerity would you put into it because it's a silly ass kind of, but it's yeah. also a real thing and it's a real moment. And what kind of things would you say? I'd probably say, ladies and gentlemen, boy, can this guy plow. Like that's, that's slang for sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. And then I go, hey, folks, look up here. And then I go... <laughs> <laughs> and then you know cl they clang their glasses and uh put, clang it during it or before after you do this and then clang 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 but it's hard when you're a comedian to do these things i did a best man thing at a guy at my buddy's wedding and i went to read like i wrote a beautiful poem for his 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 bride and i started to read it and it was very sincere and beautiful to me. And everyone at the wedding started laughing. And I was like, what the fuck? And they thought I was doing a bit. Right. It's tough when you're known as a funny person to do anything serious. I, my take on that is, though I understand the obstacle, I don't think it's that hard, at least not anymore. And I do think that part that we were talking about before of when you're consciously being able to tap into something... Yeah, and be aware that you're tapping into it because it's a choice. It makes it easier to communicate to other people that that is your choice and that is your intention. Um, to ride silly and sincerity is is part of the craft. But I'm saying if you're actually being sincere and people don't know that, yeah, there there are ways of communicating that. Yeah, but sometimes it's out of your hands. You can be very sincere, so, but they have this perception of you, guy. And no matter, you could be reading a eulogy at uh, Alfred Hitchcock's funeral. Right. And they'll still laugh. Also, well, let that be your biggest problem, that people are just always thinking you're funny. But yeah. there are simple things of saying, both saying and being aware when there's it's time to. I understand you're laughing, and by all means, continue to laugh. I love that you think I'm funny. I just want to let you know that I am being serious with this. Like, this is something I felt. Yeah. And, and even a little bit of a why. Like, but you can't do that in the middle of a poem. I disagree. Like you're in the middle of like the third stands and you're like, hey, folks, if you could knock the off the giggles. Um, but why'd you get to the third stands? And also knock off the giggles is joking. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That's what I'm saying. Shut the grease hole. Like, what do I... What do you say to a giggly crowd of giggle monsters? Feel free to keep laughing, but I want uh, at least the bride to know. Jessica? <laughs> no. I want at least, Jessica, I want you to know at least, as silly as you may think this is because people don't normally hear or see me this way, I'm being sincere 
Um, and this is coming from a place of whatever it is. But then they feel bad that they were laughing and you ruined the wedding. You can't I've, make... I've ruined enough weddings, believe me. Yeah? Oh, my God. One time I jumped out of a cake like naked. In, like in uh, Under Siege? Under what? Yeah, like that. <laughs> and people were not happy that I didn't have my bra on. Did you, do you remember when there were the pigeons in the Game of Thrones cake? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget when those pigeons flew up and you thought, okay, there they go, off into another region. All of a sudden, Gagindeldorf jumped up and grabbed one and mm -hmm. ate it. God, you know, I loved his character. You know, I, uh, I, uh, I've given some speeches uh, as, oh. as best man a few. Oh. I've also uh, a tell. couple. I've also uh, I um, was the uh, I officiated Eric Griffin and Rachel's wedding. Oh, wow. So he got married on a football field. Um, what do you mean you officiated? You know, like, do you take this person to be your person? Isn't that the master of ceremonies? The MC? Yeah. I don't know if you have an MC during a wedding. I don't think you have a referee. I think it's called did a Did you wear a black and white shirt, like with the stripes? I wore a blue and white striped shirt. Did you have the whistle? Put up a picture. No. Well, then you weren't really officiating. Well, I did have to become, like, you have to be, like, ordained. and Oh. And the way I did that was I went to some website. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, and it was 35 bucks, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're ordained. I did there was that no too. learning. Mm -hmm. What a. I, I, they just send you the thing. I know. Well, I should yeah. do that. I should. We should have take your shoes off ordained ministers. And right. if you want to uh, uh, officiate a person's wedding as an official Tyso yeah. ordainery, tell them, not me. Yeah, go to tyso.com slash ordainery. Ordainery. And, and, and you know what? Instead of thirty-five dollars, we'll do thirty-four. Thirty-four minute abs. Remember? Whoa. Remember? You are an officiator. Yeah. Because you said something once about something, and I didn't say it, but it was making me think when we were talking Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Something about Mary. Oh. Um, Angel heart. You know, I, I I used to do that sidebar. I used to, you know, you quote movies, and that was something that we would always quote. Six minute abs. You we did say, all the time. So many people did, and I'm. Not that I forgot that I was a fan of yours, but like just now in this moment, it's like, oh, that's so funny. Seven minute abs. Right. We used to quote that all the time. Oh, weird. Anyway, um, I'm not sure if this episode happens to time out to uh, when Helix Mattress is a sponsor. But if so, when we showed our Helix commercial during the uh, during Eric's uh, on Rachel's wedding, which was a lot of sincerity and then some jokes. There was a moment where I did during the wedding a Helix ad for the mattress folk. For the mattress. Team Helix. Yeah. Yeah. And uh if so, we'll put that in as as the ad here. You should. Citrus mango? Mhm. Mm Fire grilled chicken with fresh mango salsa, obviously. But yeah, having being able to do jokes and sincerity, it's great to go in and out. But when people don't know your intention, I do think it is worth clocking and trying to better understand that. But as in the ship already sailed guy, what ship? You know, you, like I said, you can't stop in the middle of a speech and go, but hey, might, by but, the but way, this do, is real. But you might be doing it again. You might be in a position where you're giving a poem at a wedding or something that is a similar feel. <sighs> where you now could go into it with a better understanding of how this thing that you did can have the most sincere impact to why you did it. Have you ever read at a funeral? I'm trying to remember if I did or not. Oh, I'm God. not sure. I did once. It was horrible. You were just, were you killing? I read. Why not intended? I read it was my grandfather's funeral and I shouldn't have done it, but I decided to read The Stand by Stephen King and that thing's about 400 pages. People were pissed. They had to get hotels and right. come back. It was, I think it was a six-day reading. And I fuck, the body started to smell. Just, the, I mean, he's just laying there, and I'm like... Is you this know, your mother's father? Well, let's not get personal. Okay. It's my dad's sister's father's lover. <laughs> so is this my your... eyes just went in focus again, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like really quick. <laughs> nice. You never read at a funeral? 
I'm not sure. I, I I've done some bits where I've uh, my my set was a eulogy I had prepared. So I've read eulogies. <laughs> a eulogy. Yeah. Have you ever been at a funeral and the stiffs just lay in there and they fart and they blow about five feet in the air? That happened. And then yeah, guy farted and he blew about five feet in the air and landed right back <laughs> was this, in the car. Was this your grandfather? Yeah, again, the or? gas builds up when you die. If they don't, if they don't do the sucking Stuck properly, the, yeah, yeah, the gas called? suck, yeah, and this guy right, right in the middle of the, and it was weird because a urologist did his eulogy, so it was really bizarre. And he just blew up and flopped back. He just went to focus again. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> You are equating squinting with me being in focus. Yeah. But what also is happening is whenever you're laughing, it's when things are the most clear. Speak on that. Well, laughter creates clarity. Mm -hmm. Because when you're laughing, you're in a state of intense joy. Mm. And it pushes away almost every other emotion, every other state of being. Right. And you just become like a window to the world. Right. And until... Or the world becomes... Uh, seen to you through a window as opposed to you becoming the window well in my in my you're mind, able to see it now through a window as opposed to a wall no i i visually become the window i f- physically sort of mentally manifest myself as the plate of glass and the only thing that brings me back is when the imaginary hummingbird slams into my forehead and breaks its neck and falls to the ground and then i'm like snap back to reality oops there goes gravity Oh, M and M. Um, I mean, if you want, I, I'm just not eating sugar and stuff right now because of this gut reset I'm doing. How about a Rolo? Uh, in your bed? No. Anything you want to plug? Oh, uh, yes. I well, you mentioned my podcast, so I'd love to p- plug my Harlan podcast, Highway, the Harlan Highway. Oh. You is that Harlan Highway music Harlan I'm hearing Highway. right now? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Is yeah, it your, is it your favorite podcast? What do you mean, Harlan Highway? Is that you like letting people know? If, well, why should we watch the Harlan Highway? There's so many podcasts. Well, let's let Harlan vouch for it. Would you say it's your favorite podcast? So people should watch. Uh, I just say it's it's a uh, it's it's my favorite to make because it's the only one I make. You know, but it's, it's like when you make in your pants. <laughs> what in the name of? Oh my gosh, dude! What? That, just, I, I just saw you for the first time, clearly. You went in focus? I you went, went in, in focus. focus. No way. way. Oh, you, I owe you a cactus cooler. <laughs> what in the name of Terry Termite's house of tonsil tissues? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know a termite queen yeah. ends up getting like this big? Huge. And this, I looked it up the other day. Any termite could become a queen. Yeah. So what is the anatomy that allows it to get like this, but the other ones don't? Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. huge. It's got this little head, and then it's got this big white gelatinous sort of body. I thought it was like you had like a yellow pus or something in it. Yeah, it's full of eggs. It's full yeah. of like it's constantly laying, constantly laying eggs, 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 because the anteaters come and eat them. And the uh, the the the, the, ke- the the chemistry of whatever's happening with the chemicals of the queen at a certain time that maybe it's conscious or not, it kind of dictates and implants what the job of, is it a farmer termite? Is it a feeder termite? Does it help protect the eggs? Does it go eat with all the things? Yeah, a worker or a soldier. Yeah, and, queen, and queens could last like 50 years. Yeah. So they're just kept alive longer. Well, look but, at Elizabeth. I mean, she... Right. That's a real, that's a human queen, though. I'm talking right, about a termite. she'll always be a termite to me. I mean, you see her teeth. She looks like she eats wood. <sighs> Sorry if you're British, but she didn't have the best fucking teeth in the world. You know, you put her beside a cedar tree. How long is the cedar tree going to last that crazy termite tooth old mum? Sorry, I didn't mean it. Okay. Do you want to promote your uh, T-shirts that you sell? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. I, saw, I'm, I draw my own T-shirts. We'll put up some pictures here. Harbling.com is the website. How do you spell that? H-A-R-B-L-I-N-G. Yeah, dot com. And That's I, C-O-M. At dot com and I I hand draw them on the right on the t shirts. So Wait, thank I thought you. I thought you hand draw some and then you have prints of them. So I hand draw the original. Right. Someone can buy the original for a lot of money, like not a lot, but two hundred dollars, 
And then once the original's gone, we make prints right. for like twenty dollars of right. of the original. So that way someone can own the original and then others can own a we'll put up a thumbnail of his first appearance where you could see us on the couch. Great. And now underneath, you could see us on a different couch at, uh, at Adam and Rena's wedding. Great. Now, in that first one, you were wearing a dinosaur that you drew. Oh, yeah, that's right. Very yeah. cool. Is that one still for sale? No, that one sold out a long time ago. Now, are your shirts comfortable? Yeah. Because I make a point to make sure I have comfortable merch. You do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's a shirt. shirt. Even when it was windy, I was nice and warm and comfy. <laughs> wow. Um, I think I would like to have a shirt of yours. I'll look on your website and I'll get something. Really? Yeah. Well, I can make you one too, if you want. Yeah. I, I can draw you a shirt. Okay. What size are you, guy? You know, I go between XL and L, but you know what I'm doing now? I'm 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 I'm, I'm XL. Yeah. I, I just let it be just it's more comfortable, even let if it, it doesn't flow. fit as well. Yeah, it's loose. XL. It's good for working under the hood of your truck or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'd imagine, yeah. XL. You're going to make me a custom shirt? Yeah. Now, is it also going to be prints? Uh, it could be, unless you don't want me to. It depends on what the shirt is. What, what do you want it to be? I mean, that's kind of for you to decide, right? I guess yeah. I'll make you an, we'll make you an action hero card, and you'll make me a shirt. How much input do we give one another? I don't want any input from for, for that. You do what you want. Then you do what you want. Okay. Splendid. How long does it take to make it? That depends how intricate it is. Right. Uh, but it can take, you know, a few days or a few hours, depending on how intricate it is. So either the amount of time it takes to watch Death Becomes Her or to watch all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. Depends how intricate. Or... Uh, Entourage. Right, which is in between. Boy, we watched a lot, a lot today. Of stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, all week, but. Wow. I love you. You do? Yeah. How come? You are a beautiful person and a funny person, and I feel recharged after being with you despite how draining a podcast can be and though i still it is draining uh i still it it it, it I, I feel better when i'm around you podcasting wow. or just see like seeing you at the club and just a hello you, i feel better around you so i don't know if that's a selfish answer but i do acknowledge that the reason i do is because of who you are not because of what i get out of it wow beautiful words yeah. thank you that means a lot you're riding down the Harlan Highway. All right, hold I think it is. On the Make sure to check out Harlan Highway. Make sure to go to harblin.com for some t-shirts. And just uh, Harlan Williams on Instagram. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Thanks, buddy. And uh, man, that Patreon episode we did was was unbelievable. It wasn't. People definitely got to go to my Patreon. Is it good? It's incredible. Did people enjoy it? Uh, it's It's... My, my whole Patreon, patreon.com slash take your shoes off. It's incredible. Is that? Oh, my gosh. How much to join? Uh, $5 to $10, and then there's a $50 tier. But let me explain what you get with that $50 tier. What? If you go to my website, you'll find I have uh, some uh, crew neck sweatshirts. Uh, mm. They're $48 plus, uh, uh, at least at the time this comes out, Yeah. Uh, plus tip and tax. Uh, not tip and tax, uh, 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 shipping and tax. Yeah. Um, so more than $50. There is an exclusive Goblin Gang sweatshirt on my website. You know what that cost? Take a guess. 62. A little more. 71. More. 90. More. 104. More. Your wife. $500. For what? What's it come with mustard? The exclusive Goblin Gang sweatshirt. But here's the secret. If you sign up for the Goblin Gang tier on Patreon, which is just $50, <laughs> and you could cancel right away you get that $500 sweatshirt. So little secret, it's actually the cheapest sweatshirt on the website. <laughs> but you sign up for 50 bucks, you get access to everything. You could check stuff out. Yeah. And if you want to stay on, you could stay on for any price range. But you get that sweatshirt shipped to you for free for 50 bucks. So that's a little secret. Wunderbar. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite chocolates, but I can't have them right now. It's also what they say in Dusseldorf and Hamburg. In Germany. Yeah. Right. Wunderbar. All right, bud. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a Polaroid of you, huh? No, thanks. I'm busy.
May I take a Polaroid picture then? Not really. Well, we'll see what happens. Theme <laughs> music. Stop All forcing right. yourself on me. Right on the <laughs> Scoot doo. Dude, that was so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Scoot doo. Nice thing to say.